Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to St. Albans on this beautiful fifth Sunday of Easter. Uh, just to let you know, everything that you need is found in your service bulletin. There's a link on uh, this page where you can find that bulletin to pray along. We encourage you to participate fully. When the bulletin says stand, stand. When it says sit or kneel, sit or kneel. That way uh, this can be more than just a viewing experience but actually uh, worship for you and uh, your family. We begin this service with hymn 518, Christ is made the sure foundation.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear on our behalf in the presence of God. Please stand. Lord, open our lips, and And our mouth mouth shall proclaim proclaim your praise. Glory Glory to to the the Father, and to the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Let us say together, Christ our Passover. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives He lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. That portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. We will read it together in unison. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save me. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first lesson. A reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing Gloria in Excelsis.
right, now it's time for the children's sermon. So if you are a kid of whatever age, this part of the service is especially for you. Now I want to show you something. I'm going to be right back. Don't go away. All right, this, what is this? It's a it's jacket, it's a coat. And in the story that you just heard from the book of Acts, chapter 7, it's a story about a guy named Stephen who loved Jesus so much, but there were people who didn't love Jesus, and because of that, they didn't like Stephen. And they got really angry at him, and they killed him. It was really amazing how angry they were at him. Sometimes people get really angry when they don't agree with you. What's interesting is they were so angry, they didn't want to get their coats dirty. And so when they started throwing rocks on him, they took their coats off and they said, here, Mr. Saul. There was a guy named Saul right there. They said, here, Mr. Saul, would you take these coats and hold them for us and watch them? And so there was a guy named Saul and he took their coats, held them. Some of them, he had so many of them, they just kind of put them at his feet so he would watch them so they could beat up and throw rocks at Stephen. Now, there's a really interesting thing that happened to Mr. Saul, is that later on, he changed his name to Mr. Paul, or as we call him, St. Paul. And he changed his mind from somebody who didn't love Jesus to somebody who loves Jesus so much that he wanted to tell everybody about him. And this is what's so good about Jesus, is that even when we get angry and even when we don't like God, God still loves us and forgives us always and even wants us to help in serving other people for God. So let's put our praying hands together. Dear God, thank you that you love us so much that even when we make big mistakes and get angry, you still forgive us and always welcome us back home to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, uh, if you would take your seats and prepare to hear the reading of the gospel from John 14. A reading from the gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me, because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let's pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about Van Halen, I want to talk about John 14, and I want to talk about the coronavirus. So Van Halen, for those of you who don't know, was probably the preeminent hard rock band and really radio-friendly rock band in the 1980s. And they were fronted for a long time by David Lee Roth, Diamond Dave, but they made a transition for 1986's album, 5150, to Sammy Hagar, who now has a very successful tequila empire that he runs out of Baja, California. One of their singles off of that 1986 platinum album, 5150, is a song called Love Walks In, which I love. Incredible synthesizer Sammy Hagar, surprisingly, doing the guitar solo because Eddie Van Halen, despite being the best guitarist in the world, uh, I guess needed a break. And I always thought that song, Love Walks In, was about love, a love between two people, romance. That's what every rock song is about. But it turns out I was wrong, and later I learned because Sammy Hagar, the lyricist and singer, gave an interview and he would often introduce the song in concert by telling you what it was about, and it's about aliens. Love Walking In is about an alien appearing and walking into your room. And I, uh, you know, there is a line in the song, some kind of alien, and I always thought it was a metaphor, but no, it was completely literal. And it turns out Sammy Hagar believed that he had an encounter with aliens who communicated with him telepathically, sort of a Vulcan mind meld situation, and it changed his life. And he sings about aliens in many of his songs. Uh, kind of ruined the song for me a little bit. Still love the synth line, however. Sammy clearly not only owns the tequila company, he is also a frequent user of the product. Now, why do I bring this up? It's an example of somebody saying something crazy. Now, maybe UFOs are real and aliens are real or not. It'd be cool if they were, but no one knows. And anyways, anybody who goes around claiming to have met one, seen one, been abducted by one, usually people say, okay, Aunt Sally, um, and uh, hmm, interesting, and quickly changes the subject. Now, this is a pretty normal reaction to someone making an outlandish or crazy statement to write it off and to be skeptical. Now in the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, the passage you just heard from Kara reading that beautifully, we hear Jesus make a really crazy statement. There's a bunch of them, but the top, the one that takes the cake is this one in verse nine where he says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen God. In other words, I'm God. He follows it up with verse 11 in case you missed it. He says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. He's making this direct claim to be God, not claiming to have the divine spark that all of us share, but maybe in a more uh, undiluted form. He's not saying that he's just a really powerful and wise representative of God, a sort of super prophet. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And especially as a Jewish person to be claiming this, blasphemy, crazy talk. If I said something like this, if you've seen me, you've seen God, Mm, you would pull me aside and sit me down and speak to me in that sort of voice you reserve for an eight-year-old and say, now, Aaron, are you a little tired? Uh, And then you would subtly be texting someone on the side saying, call 911. Now, Jesus knows how this sounds for him to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because in verse 11, he follows it up and he acknowledges this. He says, because he said, if you you believe in me, that, um, that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me. And he says, but if you don't, if you don't believe, uh, if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. So he's basically acknowledging, I know this sounds crazy, but look at what I have been doing and will be doing. Look at the works, the miracles that he's been doing, calming the sea, raising the dead, healing the sick, but even more, the big one is coming. And it's the one that we're celebrating now in this season of Easter, which is Jesus's resurrection 
from the dead. Now, what does this mean for us in this time of pandemic and anxiety and confusion and lockdown and economic stress and family stress and all of these things that are going on? Well, you have to look at the context in which Jesus makes this bold statement to be God. It begins, this passage begins with Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, he begins by speaking to people who are anxious. He knows that their hearts are troubled. You don't say, don't let your hearts be troubled unless you know people's hearts are troubled. And in that setting, he says a couple of very, very comforting things. He says, I am going to prepare a place for you in my father's house, in God's house, uh, and I will bring you to that place. And that's a place free from troubled hearts and anxious minds and sleepless nights and sin and pain and sickness and death. So to these troubled people, he promises some very real comfort. But they, again, are not really sure because it's a pretty outlandish claim. In my father's house are many rooms. I'm going there. I'll prepare a place for you. I'll bring you to that place. And so they kind of call him on it. Put up or shut up, Jesus. Or as Philip says, just show us the father and we'll believe. You know, just, just this is nice, but you really have to kind of prove it to us. And he tells them, the reason you can believe this is because if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am God. So I say to you, do not let your hearts be troubled. Now, you might then say to me, easier said than done, Zimmerman. The price of oil market volatility. We don't won't know when school will ever start again. I haven't left my house in six weeks. I'm going crazy. My hair looks awful. I'm falling apart here. The stress is killing me. Or I'm just angry. And I'm going to go outside and do what I used to do because you can't keep me down. Whatever particular way your life happens to be sort of falling apart or at least coming, uh, the cracks are showing. Jesus says to you, do not let your hearts be troubled. But know this, because in that conversation with the disciples and for us today, Jesus knew that that, as I said, was easier said than done, which is why right after he says, do not let your hearts be troubled, he then says, I will do all the heavy lifting. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and bring you to that place, because I want you to be where I am and to be with the Father in that same kind of unity that I have with him. Meaning he says, don't let your hearts be troubled, but I know you can't do it and I will do the work for you. Which of course is what he's about to do. This conversation takes place in the context of the Last Supper as Jesus is getting ready to go out and be arrested and to give his life for the disciples and for us. And so, not only does he tell us this and give us this wonderful promise, he then immediately goes out to do what needs to be done to make it possible, to seal the deal so that we can know that he has done the work, is doing the work, and will do the work to bring us safely home to that Father's house where there are many rooms for you and for me. Jesus is the way, as he tells us, and he does that work for us. So let us pray. Almighty God, in this time of anxiety and sickness and confusion and uncertainty, we hear your words to us to not let our hearts be troubled. Help us to receive that today and to know that we can trust it because of what you do for us and because you are God. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now as you are in your home or wherever you are joining us from today, please stand and join us to say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Kneeling, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means, the means made use of for their cure. And grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You are invited now to add your own thanksgivings and intercessions. Pray a special blessing today, O Lord, on all mothers, both uh, literal and spiritual mothers. We pray that you would bless them with joy of their children. We pray for those who do not have children and for whom this is a grievous thing. We ask your blessing and comfort to them as well. We pray for justice, 
for an increase in racial reconciliation in our nation, that we would pursue peace with one another. We pray for the unemployed and the underemployed, for those who are suffering from uh, financial duress, distress from this pandemic. And we pray for the sick, that you would bring them healing and comfort. We pray for the doctors and nurses and medical staff who serve them, that you would give them endurance. And we pray for each of us that we would have patience and that we would have courage. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, again, a warm welcome to you uh, from St. Albans here in Waco, wherever you are. We hope you'll know God's blessing today and every day. We invite you to participate in our online worship. It continues tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Every Monday through Friday, we have morning prayer, and we invite you to join us with that. And if 7.30 is too early, you can tune in any time on our Facebook page after that and watch those services of prayer and devotion. We would love to help you get connected here. If you are someone who is new to St. Albans, maybe uh, you've just started watching us today or in recent weeks and you'd like to be connected, we'd love to help you do that. We have an online visitor card on our website. You can see that there and you can go on that page, let us know who you are and we'll be in touch with you and help you get connected so that if you're local, once we start meeting again, we would love to invite you to join us. We have a wonderful Sunday School opportunity continuing after this service at 10.15 a.m. The Reverend Neil McGowan will be in conversation with Susan Benton of Baylor University, and they will be talking about the minor prophets as we continue our series walking through the Old Testament with a special focus on Hosea, who married a lady named Gomer, who had a fascinating past, and there's a lot there to talk about. So tune in at 10.15 to our Sunday School class. If you are a parent or a grandparent or a caregiver of a child and you'd like to have resources to help them through this time, we have lots of wonderful content for you in the back of this bulletin, which you hopefully are using to follow along in for the service. There's a lot of material, scripture, memory, John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. It's the memory verse for this week. There's lessons you can do with your kids at our own Stephanie Drum. What's up, Stephanie? Has done an incredible job of creating weekly YouTube lessons for you and your children. So make sure you check those out at St. Albans Children's Ministry on YouTube. Uh, we have oh, all, lots of ways for you to get connected in this time. We have small groups, and uh, the Reverend Neil McGowan over here is uh, helping people even now connect to these small groups, even in this time of not meeting. Uh, in person. So if you'd like to join a small group, email neil at stalmanswaco.org and you can get connected to one of our groups. Uh, and uh, two more things quickly. We know that many of you are graduating seniors or you have graduating seniors in your family uh, from high school or college. And at this time of year, we usually recognize those folks in our services. We'd still like to recognize them in this online service. So uh, we have compiled a list, but just to make sure, we're asking you to help us make sure we don't forget anyone. So if you have a graduating senior or you are a graduating senior, would you please email Stephanie at stalmanswaco.org by this Wednesday, the 13th of May, and we will make sure that we celebrate you and give thanks to God for the accomplishment in your life of your graduation. Finally, we would like to invite you to give to St. Albans. There was a time, I call it BC, before coronavirus, when we would pass this plate around and people would give offerings and that would come up to the altar behind me and we'd place it there uh, in uh, praise and thanksgiving to God. And even though we cannot physically collect your offerings uh, uh, right now, we would still welcome you to support our mission and ministry by virtually putting an offering in this plate by going to our website and clicking on the blue logo in the right-hand corner, and you can give online to St. Albans. We now uh, hear an offering of music of praise and thanksgiving to God from Glenn Beals and Eugene Lavery, and so we invite you to, in your hearts also, give an offering of thanksgiving to God. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Please stand as we say together the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Please join and sing with us, Christ is alive, let Christians sing. <laughs> 